מרת רבקה טילים גדלה בשכונת בורו פארק שבברוקלין. We went first to one doctor and then to another doctor. I can't remember what they were so worried about unless it wasn't clearing up and one antibiotic and another one. In the meantime, from all the coughing, I was always hoarse. First I got very hoarse and very, 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 and then I stopped speaking. I, I can't remember exactly how long it took or what, what caused it. You know, today sometimes I think to myself, you know, maybe... It was something psychological. I don't know. You know, today they have all kinds of, uh, maybe my parents frightened me. I don't know. Went to big doctors. Couldn't find anything wrong with her throat or her, her tzuas up there. She couldn't talk any, she didn't talk. Took her to the biggest specialists. They couldn't find anything wrong. I got some rib. זה היה בגלל זוג, גיא טרויס, לוס ממטיר המים. סרב רמיינד בזהר, אבי לפט דרום. אני הייתה שוקקת לי שכל אחד יחידה ואני הולכת להיות יחידה עם הרבה. ואני הייתה עוד פעם שונה, אני לא ידעתי את זה לפני. ואני הייתה באמת 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 But as soon as everybody left, I felt, per- I remember feeling a completely comfortable, calm, as if I was there with my own Zayda. That's how I felt with him. And he spoke to me, like, you know, as if the yeah, same age level, and he just started, I remember asking me questions. I started out whispering, probably, and... He, he, and he spoke to me, he kept on talking to me, he asked me what I like to do and, and how old I am and what I do in my spare time. I just remember having a conversation with him. And what, would I, what do I want to do someday? And I said, I love little children and I hope someday to, take, to be a mother of children and take care and teach young children. And the brother said that that was a very good goal, that that's what I should do. And as we were talking, I started talking stronger. I can't say I spoke regular, but I did start talking stronger. I was sort of mesmerized by his presence. And it was like he compelled me to talk. It's the only thing I can say. It was like he spoke and I answered. I can't explain it in any other way. He asked me, what, what could I do now? You know, and I said, well... When I get to a certain age, I can be a Benos leader. I'd like to be a Benos leader. And, you know, Beis Yaakov has a Benos um, program where Shabbos, you take groups of girls and you tell them parasha and they give out snacks. And this was, you know, they have it all over. And so he said, that's a very good thing. That's what I should do. And he gave me a bracha. And I remember backing out. And my parents, you know, asked me how it was. And I answered them. And, of course, everybody went. wild, <laughs> you know. The Rebbe told her, just to find them in the kinder, just to learn them in the kinder, like you're doing till now. The Rebbe said, help him. She came out. I don't know how many months or, or, or more, and it was, it, was, it was a terrible situation. And um, we knew that she was going for the Rebbe, and somebody called to say, your sister is talking. I don't know who picked up, but it was like, what are you talking about? She's talking. No, 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 it's not. How do you know? She was by the Rebbe, she came out talking. How do you know? She said, what do you mean, how do you know? The whole 770 came to a complete standstill, and we were just waiting. Is it true, is it true, is it true? And, and we just wait for my sister walked in. 
So are you talk? Are you able to talk? Are you talk? She says I'm talking, and it was it was it was just just you know shocking, absolutely shocking to hear her talk. After that, it was Baruch Hashem. I slowly got better and went back to school, and everything was fine. I was too young at that time to be even nosy, but I remember when. They came around asking for volunteers who would be a Benos leader because I was waiting for that to happen. And I raised my hand, I jumped up, I said, oh, I can fulfill my shalichus that the Rebbe gave me to become a Benos leader. And I was, I was a Benos leader. And I could tell you that the Rebbe for sure affected my life in many ways because I happened to be a very good student and I was encouraged to go to college and to make something for myself and make money. And I always had a feeling that that wasn't for me. I wanted to go to seminary, and my parents were very against it. And they didn't understand. What do you need it for? Get an office job then and make some money. I said, do you remember I told the Rebbe, <laughs> you know, that I want to teach young children? The Rebbe told me that I should teach young children. You know what? It wasn't such an easy, so easy to get a job. And you know what? I Baruch Hashem was Matzliach. And my goal was to marry a Ben Tyrum. Should I tell you, I always feel that because I, I had the Rebbe's brach in front of me and the Rebbe's vision, he, he somehow he looked into me and he saw who I was, and he saw what I needed and what I really wanted. And I, I really feel that he had that ashba in my life. He, he gave me that strength to do it. So to me, that's the nature of that story more than that a chas shalom, a mute girl, <laughs> became, you know, a speaking girl. To me, that is the, is the, the real bracha of that story.